everyone, and welcome to another episode of Schmidt and Lavelle. My name is Tom Lavelle, and as always, I'm accompanied by Mr. Timothy Schmidt. Hello? Tim? Yeah? <laughs> it looked like you were going to say something, and I was like, is his mic not working? Or <laughs> No, that was the applause. You hear oh okay yeah no i can't hear it it's not picking up oh man yeah that's uh yeah that's really that's not working all right (laughs) ladies and gentlemen we have a great show for you today a jam-packed show tons to talk about a big week for schmidt and lavelle but before we get into that we want to thank you for listening and we want to ask you if you aren't doing it already to give us a subscribe a follow Maybe maybe throw us a share on one of our videos or, uh, you know, a like or whatever. We've been getting tons of likes, tons of shares, tons of things. I'm going to get right into our most liked video of this past week, and that would be the gauntlet. Running of the gauntlet. Timmy, me and you had a competition, the first of maybe many on Schmidt and Lavelle, and I'd say it was a success. What do you think? Yeah, I think it went pretty well. Uh, I was the victor of the gauntlet which i don't know if i was supposed to spill the beans that yet on that but if you watch the video through i don't think you really announced the winner at the end of that time i think it was pretty clear on which video the one that we posted on instagram that was the tease to get people to watch it on youtube Mm -hmm. you know it's you know there's all these algorithm rhythms and all this bullshit out there so we just wanted to put out the T's and have them guessing who won this match. Timmy, mm. you did great. Can we can we break down the gauntlet real quick? First, we had the twisted T chug off, which we called a T off, flip cup, darts, bago, quarters, and then beer pong. Tim, you chugged the twisted T. Mm-hmm. Be you there. Flip, you you flipped two cups on your first two tries. You hit a bullseye on the dart. Mm-hmm. We, neither of us fared too well in Bago. Mm-mm. Quarters, you nail your quarter shot. And then on, I believe it was your second attempt, you hit the final the, the cup be- of yep. beer pong. Yeah, yeah. So, I, look, I don't pretend to be any good at any of these games, but for some reason that day, Tom, I was. Uh, it it took about 45 seconds to uh, about two minutes to run through the the gauntlet there. And, you know, the thing that really aggravated me is that you came up with this whole scenario and you you really didn't fine tune how we were going to evaluate, you know, each station. And, you know, if an individual didn't hit a bullseye or didn't make a cop or didn't hit this quarter shot, what that penalty would be. You kind of just made it up on the fly. And that allowed you to run through the gauntlet as fast as you could without any skill whatsoever. It's essentially, you were just like flying through it, not a care in the world. All like, so every single time we did a station. So like you had to throw five darts, Tom threw five darts as fast as he could just to hit a dartboard just to get through it. Like he didn't even aim at the bullseye. They got on the bag of toss and basically was hitting the floor. That was it with all the bags. <laughs> like, so I, for hitting the bullseye for hitting my quarter shot for, uh, what was the other thing? Doing the flip cup twice. Like I was rewarded with nothing by winning by a split second. <laughs> yeah. Like my skill I actually took the first beer pong shot, I believe. Yeah, like it doesn't (laughs) even matter. So, you know, I argued with Tom, or with you, I should say, that there should have been time added. Like, if this was more so like American Gladiators, if you remember, time was usually added, right? It took, it was like 25 seconds or something like that at at the last event. It was the Eliminator, right? Uh, the guy would get a 25 second head start, right? I right. felt like we should have done the opposite. Where if you went through this course, if you didn't hit a a dart or if you didn't hit the bullseye, you're penalized five seconds at each station, right? So instead, yeah, and that's a stupid idea. 
That's no, a dumb idea. Not. Yes, it I, is. It, no, it's not because there was no there was no. <laughs> was there drama? Was there heavy there, drama to our listen, to our gauntlet? Listen, Did it listen. work out well? I believe it, so. Yeah, but there is still there was no official, right? You counted. Yeah, for- I had a drunk from the bar filming us too. <laughs> like we, <laughs> we weren't even supposed to do it that day. And next thing you know, it's like you know what <laughs> the Phillies are playing them like this. The the Philadelphia sports schedule has thrown this show for a, a freaking loop you know we're we're recording right now during the day during no the- we're not yeah <laughs> yeah oh no we're not edit no. that out <laughs> we're, re- we're but either way this philly sports schedule has thrown us for a loop to where we were like shoot we just have to do this right now you know yeah. and we we went and did it we wanted to get something out there for the people and you know what i know what i'm talking about and I, the only thing I'm upset about is we didn't film it originally the way that I said we should have filmed it because when we're throwing the bags, you can't even see us. All you see is the stupid board and these bads hit it, and it like pissed me off that it's like we should have just done it the way I said we should have done it instead of worrying about should we, at the end of this, review the tapes, look at the footage, and then add 15 seconds or whatever it is. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, this yeah. isn't that, you know, what do you want it to be like soccer? You want extra time added on your Mr. No soccer well, guy? Huh? I mean, maybe, maybe you yeah, needed more time added on since you were clearly the loser. I did. But I'm but, saying your fight, like your penalty was like five seconds. All right. All right. So now I missed. We the agreed. Shot, so to I got to stay. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> yeah. That was your five seconds. You were counting like you were in grade school playing Red Rover, Red Rover. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, Red Rover, Red Rover. You can keep that bitch. Um, Timmy, you did win the gauntlet. People are loving the video. Like we said, our most liked video of the week. Now the 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 winner gets to choose a player that the other person has to sit. We are playing against each other in fantasy football this week. That we are the top two scoring teams in the league. Schmidt and Lavelle very well represented in the fantasy football league this year so far. I'm in first place undefeated with a little bit of luck. Second highest scoring team in the league, so I can't say too much luck. You are in fourth with a little bit of bad luck. Unfortunately, Mm -hmm. a couple of weeks, I think you were the second highest scoring team in the league, but you went against the number one scoring team this past week, losing by two points on a last second play that, you know what, maybe they should have added some time to that. Yeah. Either way. The winner, you, gets to sit somebody from my team. You have not made your decision yet. You're going to keep me guessing until the last minute, I guess, on Thursday? No, Tom, I believe I can announce it right now. You're, we're going to sit Stefan Diggs. That's, uh, that's, it was between Lamar Jackson and Stefan Diggs, and you know what? Stefan Diggs has had quite the year so far. Um, he, right now, on your roster, is currently predicted to have the most points this week so he's gonna he's gonna grab some pine this week and not play for you it's an interesting decision by you to sit in him but hey i mean i guess that's what you got to do in this in this scenario so all right my number one overall pick stefan diggs he was the uh i believe i was the ninth pick in the league this year he was my first round pick i will be sitting stefan diggs who has probably been my most consistent highest scoring player um thus far this season a huge advantage for tim schmidt now we don't want you to forget the overall bet whoever has the best season the other person has to caddy for them at a golf course at a time to be named in the future um and we haven't decided on what course i know we were throwing around walnut lane maybe it's quick it's right there showcase the nut you know we'll see i like i like it all right so Big matchup this week. We will keep you posted as to where we're going to be going. So let's get into some comments right now. And also the day that we ran the gauntlet, we decided to do what the people wanted, and that was a Wawa pizza review. Timmy, we got a comment from our YouTube video saying, you guys had me cracking up the whole time with these reactions. I was intrigued about trying the Wawa pizza, but thank you guys for saving me from the torture. (laughs) Was it torture, Timmy, eating that Wawa pizza? I mean, it's, it was, it was really bad, really, really bad. Uh, I watched the commercial 
and it looks fantastic. I know it's all marked. <laughs> it looks <laughs> great. That is not what we got. That is <laughs> not what we got. And I don't. And I will say this to me. I don't know if that was. So I think a mistake in the order was made. It was delivered to us. Shout out to Stack Girl for going and picking up the uh, the pizza and and helping mm-hmm. us record the gauntlet and stuff like that. But. Timmy, that was not what is advertised at all. Yeah. We got something that looked like a deflated football, and <laughs> it was it tasted like one too. I think we need to give it another run. Uh, I usually look your first go around is is it, and I won't go back. But even on the commercial, like the pepperoni is smaller. The pepperoni on this pizza was ginormous. It, it's, <laughs> <laughs> like these things are huge. Yeah, you never see that on a pizza. No, it looked yeah. like they ran out of pizza. Like shit, we got to use the deli, the deli pepperoni. Let's get that out. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's it was just it was brutal. Uh, it wasn't cooked. The undercarriage is awful. It, it just yeah, it was sloppy. Very sloppy. Not at good. one point, I think so. you said it looked like an old lady's skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we ended up tossing the wawa pizza um we gave it an na for uh for just it it, it was just that awful like we couldn't in, in, like, in, incomplete we gave incomplete. it i think oh yeah it said na incomplete yeah it was just brutal man you can't you can't advertise something that looks that good and and then put a product out like that you know yeah and we would never do that on Schmidt and Lavelle. We advertise a great product, and that's what we do. We put out a great product every time, no matter what. So we're going to be moving on to our next video and comments, and this will be from the Wu-Tang video. We got a comment from Mr. Heastiff saying, Rap Crap is a Marge Schmidt saying that will live forever. You also couldn't say that something sucked in the Schmidt house. Timmy, he stiff says that rap crap is a Marge Smith saying that will live forever. What do you think? Uh, that's a that's a fact. Um, yeah, my, my mom did not like that. She also did not like cursing. Cursing was a big thing at this house. And Tom, if I if I may, can you stay here yeah, for yeah. one second? We're here. Timmy's Timmy's now moving to go find something from the house. Um, he has that he wants to show everyone. Here he comes. He's back. Looks like he's holding something. What is that? Uh, this Tom has been in the house hold for years, and that is the. Mrs. Schmidt cussing jar. <laughs> Whoa, the cussing jar. I love it. So anytime we would have people over, okay, we would use the basement, which is where I'm at right now, as our hangout. There's a bar down here. There's also a nice size TV. It's a nice lounge area. But my mom would always be upstairs, and if she heard somebody curse, she would yell down the steps, and she knew my friends just by the sound of their voice. So she would be like, Wagner, that's a dollar in the cussing jar. <laughs> so she, and then you would hear uh, you know, my buddy Jim would be like, sorry, Mr. Schmidt. And then, yeah, he would obviously make a donation into the cussing jar. So that was, uh, that was a staple of the Schmidt household. <clears throat> that is awesome, Timmy. And we share something that, I was not allowed to say the word sucks either. Nothing sucked. You could not say this sucks. That sucks. We would have to say that stinks. I didn't yeah. like it, it stinks. Another one that I was not allowed to say was pissed. You cannot be pissed off. Do not say pissed in this house. Oh, yeah. I was not allowed to say uh poop or or pee, Tom. My mom would make us say Tinkles and stinkies. <laughs> You're lying to me. I shit, I shit you not. It was <laughs> it was stinkies and tinkle. <laughs> so so was, you couldn't say I have to go pee. You have to say I have to go tinkle. Uh, she would go. Did you go tinkles before you go? <laughs> it was just, <laughs> you going, Mom, oh, my stomach hurts. She goes. Did you take a stinky today? <laughs> I'm like, what? She's like, you better go go upstairs and take a stinky. <laughs> <laughs> it was 
tinkles and stinkies. And finally, after like, I don't know, I think it was middle school, we grew out of it. We were like, we can't say stinkies anymore. Like, all my friends are making fun of me for saying stinkies. I think there's <laughs> something wrong with it. <laughs> Wait, you guys don't all say stinkies? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to go take a tinkle, guys. <laughs> what did Schmidt just say? <laughs> tinkle Bell. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Wow. That's incredible. Um, shout out to Mr. He's Stiff. Thank you again for the comments on our Wu-Tang video. Wu-Tang forever, as some would say. All right, Timmy. Our most viewed video of the week was one that we put out about Taylor Swift. Miss Taylor Swift and how is it possible that Jason Kelsey and Taylor Swift are using each other to gain more popularity? And... Uh, you got a little bit of a, a tussle with some Swifties out there, didn't you? The Swifties attacked. They did not like that I insinuated that the the great, the amazing, the flawless, infallible Taylor Swift would possibly do do something to add to her popularity, to grow her brand or anything like that. And um, some of them like really, really like, first of all, they said it, it became a contest it's amazing, and I want to talk about this, how sometimes people will hear things that they want to hear. You know, they watched that video before even it was done. They heard something that they wanted to argue about that wasn't even brought up in the video. No one said that Travis Kelsey was more popular than Taylor Swift, okay? We talked about it uh, at length last week on the show. This is definitely a bigger come up in popularity-wise for Travis Kelsey. Right. He's got a bigger platform now because he is dating Taylor Swift. No doubt about it. And so they kept arguing with me about that. I said, nobody said that. Nobody said she doesn't need it. And what they kept saying, she doesn't need it. She doesn't need him. And it's like. She doesn't need it, but this will help grow her brand. She's now in the NFL. How many men do you think have heard about tra or, uh, Taylor Swift now? more because she's been at the nfl games million oh uh, i mean look we, we've seen stats already we've seen um just branding in general like we've seen numbers on it uh yeah i'm watching the nfl network and they're talking about how viewership is up and uh it, it's it's bananas it's the taylor swift effect uh so there's no denying that you know she's accessing you know, a a different part or a different group, if you will, right? Um, that's gravitating towards her and her music or whatever, but she's doing something for the NFL that that is is undeniable. It's it's incredible. So um, you know, view viewership's up and and all that. So I mean the Swifties are coming to watch football now too. So it's interesting. Right. And NFL fans that maybe are as familiar with Taylor Swift are now watch or seeing her and maybe being like, well, what kind of songs does she have? Or let me, you know, talk to my wife about this song or whatever. And I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them. But the one particular comment I want to talk about is from the five little figs. She says, I don't know about Travis, but Taylor does not need her platform boosted. I said, you can always use a boost. The biggest brands in the world are always trying to grow their audience, which is true. We're big WWE fans. They're always trying to grow their brand. Disney, the NFL, whoever, a huge brand is always trying to get new followers, new subscribers, new customers, whatever you want to call them. She said, and this is what gets me, the politely disagree. She says something, politely disagree, and then tries to take a dig at me. Politely disagree. She is steadily breaking records. People can't get tickets to concerts and awards, etc. She doesn't need him. Very typical for a woman's success to be downplayed, especially by a man. You should listen to the song she wrote about the subject. <laughs> <laughs> and so, to which I replied, "You go, girl." <laughs> Tim. That is, I, did anyone did we diminish Taylor Swift's success or get, like take credit away from her on her already huge popularity? Um, politely saying no, we did not. <laughs> I, I like that just shows the 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 fragility of some of these Swifties. I uh, I feel like 
we've gone down a hole here, Tom, that it, we can't climb out of. It's uh, it's something now that you're just going to be labeled with for, I mean, at least one half of the, the Schmidt and Lavelle show is going to be labeled, you know, a, a Taylor Swift hater. Not me. Hey. I, I love Taylor Swift. I have two daughters that love Taylor Swift. I, I am in full support of that woman. You go, girl. <laughs> Tim, last night I um I decided to to kind of poke the bear. My wife is a big Swifty, and I just dropped a comment to her, like, you know what? The more I think about it, and the more I'm seeing Taylor Swift, the more I feel like she's overrated. You know, like what what is she her music, specifically her music is overrated. I, I real I'm honestly starting to feel that more and more like look she is selling these women right or their fans whatever she's selling the fans on and my my wife started saying this yesterday one she had trouble with like her her contract and the deals on her uh on her music she writes her own music and all this other stuff well she didn't own the rights to it so then she re-released all her albums to people to buy those and they're like yeah let's go with taylor we're gonna be with her we're gonna fight this cause two my wife says she drops these eggs in her lyrics to find you know you do this and it's like you're putting a, a, a clue together it's a clue for this and that that's what she's selling not good music she's selling the eggs and she's selling the come with me help me fight the system and give me a gazillion dollars tim what's the best taylor swift song um Dude, I, there you I go. My I point exactly. Is there really like a classic in all these I, Taylor Swift songs? I don't know them by <laughs> I don't know them by name. I just they pop up on their part. So I have a playlist in my car. It's called Kid Songs, right? Okay. And it's every song that my kids want to hear. So all I do is I add it to the playlist and let it play. So uh, I mean, there's like two or three tw- Taylor Swift songs in there that they love and they sing and it's great. But I mean. I don't know the names of the songs. When they pop on, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's Taylor Swift. That's it. Yeah, right. So I'm, I again I'm I'm in the minority here, Tom. I don't I'm not a big Taylor Swift Tay Tay fan, but I know she has good music. I know people tune into her. She's a megastar, the whole deal. Yeah, and obviously super talented. I'm I'm saying that stuff kind of in jest. I wanted to get my wife going. And believe me, it worked. She was playing songs. What about this? What about that? What about? (laughs) (laughs) And real quick, before we move on to our last uh, comment, shout out to uh, my wife's coworkers. If you're listening to this, you go tell her that Tom says Taylor Swift is the greatest artist in the history of artists, of artistry. All right, Timmy. This is going to bring me to our last comment, last question that a, a listener sent to us and i want you to answer because when he asked this i said oh man this is perfect for timmy the question was posed if you could pick a color from one of the philadelphia sports teams to be a universal color for all philadelphia sports teams okay like the pittsburgh pittsburgh has all their colors are uh, mm-hmm. gold, gold white and black, and black right yeah so mm-hmm. if we had to have a city where we had one set of colors for all of the uniforms what would the colors be and why? Ooh, that's not bad. Uh, that's tough. You know what? I would probably, two of the teams are already rock red right now. Uh, I would probably do some type of red and blue. I think the Phillies red and blue, you know? The maroon? Um, yeah. or Or red. I don't know because so what I'm thinking here is like Philadelphia was the birthplace of the country, correct? Right. And the flags of the color are red, white, and blue, and the Sixers rock wet red, white, and blue. And I think that that really would be the theme. If you're going to do a universal theme all the way across, I would say that would probably be the theme: red, white, and blue. Probably the Sixers colors. Um, if I'm picking, if I'm picking. The current team's colors, I would probably have to roll with the the Phillies burgundy. Yeah, uh, Timmy, I 100%. So I was thinking about this, and initially I thought 
man, the Kelly Green would be sweet forever. I love Kelly Green. But then I thought, Kelly Green and the baseball and then the basket, we couldn't do it. What, are we going to wear Kelly Green when we play the Celtics who are also wearing green? You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, yeah. that's not going to work. And then the more I thought about it, it's kind of a unique I think the maroon is that the burgundy is that what we're talking about yeah. same thing yeah. and yeah. I think some sort of like that I feel like a eagles uniform if it was like the maroon and white with maybe a little gray in there or every once in a while throw in the baby blue I think we agree on that I'm going to go with that as well the, the only is- maroon the only yeah. issue is that yeah the, the redskins rock the or I should say the commanders rock son of a <laughs> Rock the the burgundy colors. So is it that same color? Very similar. Yeah. Well, screw them though. Like you know what I mean. Who cares? Like they can't whatever. even figure out their. Team they can't name. even figure out their uh, team name. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna go with the burgundy maroon, whatever you want to call it. All right, Tim. That's gonna lead us to our our first topic, and that is going to be the zero and four Philadelphia Eagles yet to get a win on the season. Um, you know, Little. new general manager is needed, new head coach is needed, uh, new quarterback, new everything. Like yeah. it's just a mess. We can't seem to get out of our own way. It's and been brutal, the yeah. seasons, hopefully we get a number one pick. What do you think about those Eagles and them just not being able to find a way to win? Yeah, it's been it's been ugly this whole year. Um, you know, I can't no one could have predicted this. Uh, out the gate, we thought, you know, coming off a of Super Bowl, you figured, like, yeah, they get out the gate, yeah, you know, a little slow, but I mean, to not win a game yet and just to be, I mean, this is uh, obviously we're being facetious here, right? like, <laughs> uh, but this is what the mentality of the Philadelphia fan like, this is crazy, Tim. We're wild. undefeated, we're one of two undefeated teams in the league. We had, like, I will agree, we haven't played to our potential, but we're still winning. and you talk to Eagles fans and it's like, we stink. Yeah. No, they look. And I think a lot of, a lot of it has to do with how high the bar was set last year. And, you know, it's just, they haven't played their potential. Right. So they're, they continue to win, uh, but it's, they're winning ugly and that's fine. And, And I've said this plenty of times on the show that winning in the NFL is very difficult. Right. And you played the, the commanders this past week. You won an overtime. It shouldn't have gotten to that point. Defense looked a little suspect this week, but still, you get the W in overtime. Um, it's an in division opponent. Like those games are hard to win. And again, you are, like you said, Tom, one of two teams that are undefeated in the NFL. I keep on hearing about like, well, they haven't really played any good quarterbacks. There's like six good quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Yeah. Everyone it's, you know, it's, you know, you got the Patrick Mahomes, you got Josh Allen, right. You have, uh, I mean, two is playing at a high level right now. There's Joe Barrow, right. All these guys are, are really good quarterbacks, but you don't play every team every week, right? Like wow. you play your schedule. And you have to face those quarterbacks on your schedule. I mean, last year we heard the same thing. Well, they didn't really play anybody, and they, you know, got to you know they got to the Super Bowl, and they barely lost Patrick Mahomes in that, in that Super Bowl. It's it's such a ridiculous argument. You only play the teams that are in front of you, and all these sports talk shows, and they want to rank, you know, each team. And the Eagles are in the power rankings. They're like fifth because they they're not playing the greatest. Whatever. I don't give a shit. As long as we get a W each week, then that's fine. Now they're not going to go undefeated. It's only one team in the NFL that's done that. Okay. But they're going to have a really good record. They're going to make the playoffs, right? And they're going to have another run at this at this Super Bowl. And, and that's what you need to be happy with. You can, I mean, you could be the Bears. You could be legitimately 0 and 4 and think that you have, you know, a a franchise quarterback where he's suspect like Justin Fields, like you're, it's just, it's really frustrating. Cause I, I mean, it feels like the Eagles fans have really have become like, I, I don't like just the sky is falling, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't I, get it. Yeah. I, and look, there's room for improvement. And I guess it's good to hold that high standard, you know, like if we play like we did this past week against, um, 
the 49ers, it's going to be that's going to be a tough game, you know. So we we do have to clean some things up, but to be able to win and hopefully learn that lesson is is a good thing. Yeah. Um I I have really no concerns whatsoever, you know, moving forward. The the offense looks really good. Um uh, there's a couple questionable play uh, play calls, but like <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing that's that has been talked about in the first couple of games here is the 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 push push or the brotherly the brotherly shove, right? Like that's yeah. that's the talk of the league again. Um, yeah, the defense has some holes in it. The defense line, yeah, isn't really getting home, uh, which means that they're not getting to the quarterback. I think they only have a total of six sacks in the first four games. They had seventy last year, which one was was a was an NFL record. So they're getting the pressures. They're just not getting to the quarterback. And I think that's going to change soon here. Uh, but for the most part, uh, they're playing pretty decent football to be 4-0, and and I expect some of the same uh, moving forward. Now, in two weeks, the schedule gets really tough. There's a stretch here of about six or seven games where you're playing those elite quarterbacks. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll know by that time, you know, where we're at, you know, throughout the, throughout the season. So, uh, buckle up for all those people that say we haven't played any of the, the best teams. Yeah, we're getting it in, in three weeks and buckle up, Tom. Oh, yeah. Even this week. That's no, that's no, uh, you know, road trip to LA to play against. You know, they won a Super Bowl a couple years ago. They got a great head coach, a good quarterback, and they're a solid team, you know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. the, the, the Rams are, I, I think that's a big test this week. Um, all right. The Phillies just had their first game in the postseason. A great win, four to one. Wheeler looked great. He was he was pitching incredible. Um, a couple concerns. One, it, it, just minor. And and Timmy, you you tell me. The third base coach, you know, he was holding the guys. He he tried to hold Harper, and Harper ran through it. Uh. You know, in the postseason, one run, it seems like it means so much. Mm-hmm. And early on with Schwarber, I feel like he should have been sent. Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty, and that's tough to say. Schwarber, obviously not the fastest guy, but when the when the throw was errant, it was like, oh, man, that would have been a good chance to put some pressure on. And Craig Kimbrell, I know he came in and he, he got uh, the outs without letting up a run. I just – I'm worried about Kimbrell. And where when it's going to be a one run game or it's a tie game and he comes in that he he might let us down. What do you, what do you think? It did I miss any concerns or is there anything else you want to talk about with the Phillies? No, I, a lot of people again. I, I maybe it's the same fans that are piggybacking off of the the, the Eagles uh, hype, right? The the bar, but people are freaking out about the the, the Marlins and. I mean, they're missing their two best pitchers, right? And I'm like, look, guys, like we're we're probably the second best team in in the National League. Probably in the league right now, we're probably like fourth. Uh, I would say if you're doing the power rankings of the playoff teams, right? Uh, I don't see how the Marlins take the series. You know, Wheeler comes out and deals. I'm glad that we're not talking about the Dusty Waffen game, right? You're talking about the third base coach. That's that's his yeah. Name. Because yeah, there was some questionable calls with him. Uh, he got Nick, Nick Castellanos thrown out at home. Um, it was a tight play, and there was a strong throw from center field. But uh, you know, and then you have the 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 first inning debacle where you know Schwarber doesn't get sent, uh, and then Harper runs through his his stop sign on third base, which was yeah, obviously it worked out for us. So it's uh, you're right in the playoffs, every run matters and. Yeah, there is going to be some nerves with these guys, you know, these pitchers on the mound, the relief pitchers. Yeah, after Wheeler goes out, you're like, all right, which which Alvarado are we getting here, right? Yeah, uh, and which which Craig Kimbrel are we getting? I do have concerns with Kimbrel. I said this before, but you have to trust the guys that have gotten you there. He's pitched well in the beginning of the year. This is a whole new season. It's the postseason. You got to hope that these relievers get you to where you need to be. Um, I feel like these guys are bright like guys. And what do, what do I mean by that? I mean that when it matters, when you're in the playoffs, are they going to deliver bright lights, right? Like, Hey, 
this is a big spot, right? Like we're in the playoffs. We need an out. I feel like you're going to be able to rely on Sir Anthony Dominguez, right? Like last year he was in those spots and he, he delivered last year. I know he hasn't pitched as well as he, he should have in relief this year, but Hey, we're in the playoffs now. I think you got to trust your guys and we'll, we'll see how it works out, but it was a good first win. Um, the Phillies win by playing small ball, which, you know, the whole year they're mashing home runs and, and that's how they win. They hit, they hit home runs and drive in runs and that's how it works. But they played some small ball. You got some stolen bases from, you know, Christian Pache. You got some stolen bases from Trey Turner and got those runs in the bottom of the lineup delivered with, you know, uh, Johan Rojas and Christian Pache, right? Like these yeah. guys that, um, you know, have been part-time starters for the balance of the year, you know, get a chance to start in the first, in their first playoff game and, and they delivered. So kudos to, to Topper by putting them in the lineup. Yeah, and a great call, and that's what's so important about getting those guys all that playing time throughout the season. So they're ready for the atmosphere of Citizens Bank Park in the playoffs, which I want to bring that up too in just a moment. But to be able to put those guys, two right-handed batters in against the left-handed pitcher was huge for the lineup and getting getting more. Because that was a concern at the beginning of the year. Like, who's our right-handed bats going to be? You know, especially when, when Hoskins went down. So... Two things I want to talk about before we move on. Actually, three, sorry. One, Reese Hoskins throwing out the first ball last night. I thought it was a classy move by the Phillies, Mm -hmm. a nice moment for all the fans. And I've been critical of Reese Hoskins in years past and all that stuff. But to have a guy that was uh, like a big part of the the Philadelphia team, the run last year, gets injured um, before the season this year, misses the whole year, and to have him throw that ball, what a boost, what a, what a cool moment and a classy move by the Phillies. Tim, the crowd was rocking, and you said to me, Tom, when you get a moment, switch back and forth to the other game and check it out. Tim, you could, it was like, was anyone at those other games? You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like, we are, <clears throat> we are head and shoulders above some of these fan bases out there. It's It's crazy. Well, Zach Wheeler said it too. He said, you know, it was about a half hour before the game. Um, and he went out, stepped out of the dugout to run out to the bullpen where he, he starts tossing to kind of loosen up. And he said he got chills. This is a half hour before the game. He said there wasn't a seat empty in the house and they were just going nuts. He said he got an ovation. He was like, dude, I'm ready to go. And that stuff means a lot to these players, man. It carries them through certain certain situations. And um, it's great now because you hear it on all the shows, too. Like I was watching MLB in the night and I was checking like Sports Center and all these other channels. And the one thing that they talk about is the home field advantage that the, that the Phillies have. Now they're in home playoff games. They're 23 and 11. That's the best mark in all of baseball. In wow. any in in any home games like that's that's that win percentage is is tops uh at Citizens Bank Park. It's pretty impressive. And the crowd is real, the, the noise is real, and it comes through the TV unbelievably. And people that were at the game say it's the same thing there. It's uh it's such an advantage. Um, and then just to touch on the Reese Hoskins thing, man, like you wonder if that's gonna be his last opportunity, you know, to be in front of the Phillies fans. Um, in that type of atmosphere because he is at the end of his contract after this year. Um, there's talk about him possibly coming back and pinch hitting in, in the World Series. I don't know if that's going to happen, but, um, you know, it it might have been his last moment really to to take in, uh, you know, the, the Philadelphia Phillies crowd and to be on the field. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Yeah, and – they said that that there is a chance that he would come back. Last question on the Phillies, Timmy. Dancing on my own. Kind of the uh, the anthem for the Phillies in these last mm-hmm. couple of years. Are you okay with that still being the anthem for the Phillies? I'm 100% in. We found out in the in the middle of the year. I know they talked about it in the beginning of the year that, hey, we're, we're moving on from it. Like it was last year's theme. And if you remember – Phillies didn't start out great this year. And then, you know, halfway through, they flipped it and they said, you know what? We're bringing the song back. And <laughs> look where we're at. You know, we're in the playoffs and you hear it playing, you know, in the background after the Phillies won last night and everyone's singing. I just, it, 
it's tied to this group, right? To this core group. Yeah, there's a handful of different players on this team now, but it's just it the memories that were created last year during that run were special. And I feel like it's it's almost a continuation of of last year, this playoff run, and it's unfinished business. And even the way that these, these players are talking after the game, you know, the focus is on the trophy, and that's it. The mentality of these players is like, hey, we got something to do, and we're going to get it done. And I'm not saying it's in a song, but it, it just reminds me of the run last year and how it's going to continue through this year and they're going to finish the job and i am i love the song it, it gives the, the the phillies fans an opportunity to sing along and be somewhat part of the team uh it's a chance to to really share with these players uh you know moments like like uh walk off wins and just like it's just an enjoyable moment so i th- i'm i'm good with it and i hope uh i hope i keep on hearing it for the next month absolutely hopefully we'll be dancing all the way to a world series victory timmy speaking of dancing and good times you had quite a weekend lined up man i mean the the travel the 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 dressing the the money the whole deal Tim, you had two weddings to attend this weekend friday and saturday how did the weddings go we we kind of teased it on our ig with a with a story tell us Tell us how the weddings went and maybe, well, let's just get right to let's the, get the yeah, yeah. Um, solid weddings, really fun and happy for, for, yeah, the couples involved. Um, the first wedding was down in, in Stone Harbor, uh, at the Reeds, which is very nice place. Uh, just, yeah, I wanted to, to dress in a manner that, you know, fit what the venue was right and weddings you usually wear suits and yeah, i had a nice suit picked out you know it's really my only suit that fits me at this point because you know i am a fat shit but um <laughs> so i'm i'm ready for this wedding and I, i'm staying in wildwood and my girlfriend drives me over i get dressed and yeah she pulls upside outside the reeds <clears throat> and yeah i step out of the car and as i step out of the car she goes, whoa. And I go, whoa, what? She's like, you got a rip in your pants. And I'm like, I thought she was messing around with me. I was like, okay, all right, whatever. I was like, give me a kiss. She's like, no, you have a rip in your pants. I'm like, and then I'm like, I'm looking at her. I'm like, oh, she, she's being serious. Like, this is not a good thing. And so I reach back and sure enough, there's a rip, but I can't really see it, Tom. And I go, is it bad? And like, can I get away with it? So like I had a black suit on. So I'm thinking like, if my coat kind of sits over it, like I'll be okay. Like I can just get away with it. It's like black pants. Like it, no one's really looking down there. Right. Yeah. And obviously from our IG story, <laughs> there was no getting away with that no one. Getting, Timmy. <laughs> no getting away with that one. So uh, this is about 15 minutes before this wedding's about to start. So it takes about 20 minutes to get from Wildwood to Stone Harbor. And I'm like freaking out at this point. And I'm like, I'm sh- I'm like, I'm just going to go. I'm like, I, I just got to go. Like, fuck it. Like, I'm I'm going in. She's like, you are not going in. Like, you cannot go into this wedding like that. And I, like, I started thinking about, about the possibilities of, yeah, I'm going to get made fun of like the entire wedding because I have a rip in my pants. So she makes me get back in the car. We drive back over to Wildwood, and now I'm stuck with my next day's attire to wear for for this wedding. Thank God I had a I had a backup suit, right? So like, yeah. I had a blazer, and like I actually had to go get pants. So I had to get uh I had to get khaki pants. So I had to run over to Walmart and get khaki pants so i'm wearing one like this is all in like a 45 minute span so i have her she's washed she's ironing my clothes i'm running over to walmart to get to get my uh my new khaki pants so i got walmart pants on i got a blazer on and i got um you know another shirt and i hop i throw that on and then you know boogie over to the wedding i missed the entire ceremony i walk in late and everyone's like where were you at and i dude it was, it was kind of 
easy because I was a little nervous about what I was wearing. I was like, shit, like I'm, I don't have my suit. It's a nice place. Like, how's it going to go over? And dude, I get, I got a bunch of compliments. And then I told the story and I had the picture and everyone's like, dude, that's unbelievable. <laughs> like, How, so, when, when you walked into the, uh, to the ceremony, like, I just imagine like you walk in, it's like a big door slam and like, they're like, do you yeah. sir take it? Ap- and it's like, yeah. Oh, uh, hey, everybody. <laughs> no, it wasn't like out of Wayne's world where he's like trying to break into the church, right? And he's yeah. like, Cassandra. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. Um, because they were the ceremony was already over, so they, they were in the middle of cocktail hour. So I kind of like snuck in, you know, and went to the side and they started blending in real quick. I'm like, Look at her. I'm like, God, what a ceremony, a- huh? Everybody, that yeah, was great. Yeah. Oh, it's te- teared up a little bit. <laughs> Um, where were you but, well i just i had to take a little stinky you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i got stuck in it yeah that would um so no it was a great wedding it was a great venue um and i pulled it off tom i, I got you blended in and people were complimenting you and you had a great icebreaker story to because t- uh, a lot of times when you're at these things and you're running into people and you're like hey you know you yeah. you had the gift of having something to you oh, won't yeah. believe what happened to me, like, you know, what what's going on. So you could just go right into that. Well, I was I was very frustrated because, you know, it's a rip in the, the only suit that I have. So now, like, yeah, you know, I got to go get a suit. But at the same time, Tom, I'm yeah, it's I'm in the middle of this this weight loss challenge and I'm trying to lose some LB. So I can't really get it right now, you know, but like I, I'm sitting there driving back to Wildwood. I just mad at myself because I'm like when did I rip this suit? And like, why did I rip this suit? <laughs> and now like, I'm thinking like, I think I know why I ripped this suit. It's because I'm too goddamn fat. <laughs> you know I mean? like, it was right up my ass, dude. It was so bad. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is just terrible. Wow. But now I'm in, now I'm in a dilemma that I have another wedding to go to. And I've already worn the clothes for the first, oh my gosh. For the first wedding. So I got to go rerun dude. So I had to, the next day I get up. Yeah. And actually I felt fantastic. I didn't really get too crazy. Um, you know, my girlfriend picked me up after the wedding and, uh, we drove the next day in the morning, about eight thirty, nine o'clock woke up and, and boogied on up to, to Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which was a nice four and a half hour drive. Mind you, no traffic, Tom. Didn't hit any traffic. But um yeah, we made we made the Excuse the travel and we made the travel enjoyable, Tom. We were listening to music and you know, getting gas. Taylor Swift. And, yeah, we we're tuned into Taylor Swift. And um, so we get up to the Jersey Shore wedding and I mean, it was, uh, again, nice venue. It was up at my buddy's place, uh, Ball Birds, up in uh, Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania, Ball, Ball Birds Brewing Company. Um, again, a nice venue. It was a uh, beautiful ceremony. I made that ceremony. But, I, I, again, I wore the same same clothes I wore the night before. I just rehired them and you know, changed the shirt. And... That's awesome. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like, there may be some sort of, like, you know, oh, man, you know, I'm wearing the same, like, but like that's awesome for you because it's so easy. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like whatever, throw it right yeah. back on. Here I go, round two. Now, I did have a different colored shirt, um, so I had a blue shirt on the night before, and I switched it to a white shirt the next night. But I mean, that was really the only thing that I changed. But there was no one at the wedding the night before with me, so no one knew what the hell I was wearing. You yeah. know what I mean? So I got away with it. But like yeah, the one thing about Williamsport, Pennsylvania, Tom is it is a true turn back and it's like back to the future up there dude like it's 2023 in philadelphia it's i swear to god it's like 1997 up in williamsport it's crazy like they don't i don't even think they know who taylor swift is up there <laughs> like they've never heard any of their songs or anything like that. Who? Like, yeah, is that the but, little girl? She was born. Yeah, she lives. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. in Reading, right? Well, I, that's where I went to college, and and we would. I remember coming home like I'd I'd hear all these like great songs on the radio, and I'd come home to Philly like during Christmas break, and I'd be like, "Dude, did you hear this new song?" And they go, "Dude, that's been out for like a year." <laughs> I'm like, "What? I didn't, really? <laughs> it's a great song." <laughs> uh, 
it's just like the people, like the styles are totally different up there. And it's up in like central Pennsylvania. It's just like in the middle of nowhere, but it's, uh, it's funny, man. when you see these people and how they dress and like the hotel we stayed at was called the Janetti. Everybody was complimenting your pants. Those are yeah. great pants. Where you, is that a Walmart? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Those are those are beautiful. Hey, you really you really broke the prank on them, huh? <laughs> Timmy, it's it's, it's it's a blast from the past up there, and you had some great times at the weddings. And you know, as the pants rip, sometimes too much, even of a good thing, can can ruin it. And I want to talk about something real quick that. Maybe too much goes on, and and that's wedding toasts. People giving Ugh. speeches at weddings. I've been to a couple where, you know, honestly, there was one that I was at, and the wedding ended, and the next day, everyone like you know stayed at a hotel. They wake up for like brunch or whatever, and all anyone could say was, "Man, what a great wedding!" Could you believe that best man speech? Like <laughs> it was like that. Like people were like sweating during this best fan speech and i don't want to get into that too much but there was something about a uh a stripper named se- like uh sexual chocolate or something like that there was a story about someone p- peeing on a coffee table <laughs> and like just awkward like mm-hmm. it would have been great for a bachelor party the speech a little long but it was not wedding appropriate <laughs> yeah i think i think when you when you run long wedding toast they uh typically can go uh, a little awry if you will right and i think standard would be you know anywhere from like three to five minutes you have to have them i mean some people can just they rehearse them and they can rip off the top and remember them um i'm not one of those guys uh i like to have something prepared and i like to you know read it and sometimes just do some notes and stuff like that uh, I made the one one mistake one time. I had to do a toast, and I did all the notes on my phone. And during this the toast, I had every single one of my friends calling me that was at the wedding. So like, I could, I kept on like having to hit the die, the die, the die while I was doing the toast. So that was they uh, knew you were doing that. So oh they yeah, did it on, oh wow, yeah, yeah. So that was that kind of messed me up. Um, but like, yeah, when you go. When you go too long, it, it gets a little, little dicey, and you got to keep it clear, concise. Have a couple jokes, right? A Obviously, nice story talk, mixed in. Nice story. Talk about how beautiful the bride looks, right? And then yeah, you take a couple shots at your buddy, and then you move on, right? And, yep. and then you raise a toast. But it's uh, it's not called a speech. It's called a <laughs> toast. Okay, like we're toasting. <laughs> I hate when people do that too, as well. So. It's uh sometimes they can get a little nuts, um, but yeah, it, it just keep it keep it tidy, tighten up a little bit, you know. Yeah, right. Like, you know, it, they they run long and they get awkward, and I just these people that are now like so many times make the toast and the speech about the person you're toasting, your friend. It's their day. It's their time. It's the wife or it's your, you know, the bride and the groom. Make it about them. It's not about you. It's about right. them. So yeah, make this... it short. Make it tell everyone how much you love them, how great they are, some nice stuff, some funny <clears throat> stuff, and move on. There's, uh, yeah, this isn't your one man show act. This isn't a talent show. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. like chill out. Dude, I, so I got to say, on Friday night, uh, it was funny. Like, look, the, the toast ran a little long. Uh, to the point where one of our buddies stood up and was like, all right, wrap it up. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, That's I a was, kill, dude. I was dying laughing. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> um, uh, did they listen? Did they wrap it up? No. Oh, That's my God. <laughs> So, uh, look, if, like you said, it, it's never a good thing when people are talking about, you know, the, the toast the next day, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, if you delivered, well, I guess it's a good thing, but if you didn't, you don't want to be the story of like, man, that toast was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Timmy, 
let's do uh let's bang out a couple things real quick here and um we'll go first of all the process the process uh i think you said to me this week the process is officially over it's done it's dead James Harden, I think, recently spotted this past weekend at a strip club where the strippers were walking around with signs that says Daryl Morey is a liar. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get it. Uh, the The reason why I said that is because you're not coming out of the East anymore because the Celtics just traded for Drew, Drew Holiday. The Bucks just got Dame Lillard. And you're clearly either the third or fourth best team in the East right now, and you don't have enough th- firepower to take on those teams in a, in a seven-game series. Uh, and that's that. It, unless something miraculous happens, you get rid of James Harden, you get somebody that's viable on this team. I just don't think that Maxi, uh, you know, and Bede and Kelly Oubre are gonna are gonna win you a series against you know, the those two teams. It, it's sad to say. But, uh, I mean, this general manager has not done a good enough job. And you don't have any assets to trade away. Uh, You're stuck with this James Harden fiasco that you can't make any better. Uh, And then the two guys that you think you were going to bring in are are on your competitors. Dean Lillard's now playing for the Bucs, and you got Drew Holiday now playing for – now playing for for the Celtics. It's just ridiculous. They got Jalen Brown, and uh, it's so – it's so frustrating. Yeah. The most frustrating team I can remember in my fandom of Philadelphia, this, the Sixers organization, they stink. And we've talked about that at length um, in past episodes, but just another example of the process and the organization just fumbling and terrible. The fans deserve better. All right, Tim, speaking of uh, making some fumbles, a, a story that's not so well known. We wanted to put out there is, the Oakland A's, another organization that is pretty incredible. What a what a show of what a what a thing they did for well, Miguel Cabrera. Well, so if you guys follow baseball, when when a, a player of Miguel Cabrera's caliber, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Uh, he's hit over three hundred in his life. I think he's had he has over five hundred home runs. Uh, he he's excellent. And he's retiring. Hall of Famer, first ballot. Like, and he and he announced before the season that this is going to be his final season. And a lot of the organizations have gone out of their way, yeah. You know, when he comes to their ballpark, to gift him with some sort of retirement gift. And you know, the A's. There's a lot of drama with the Oakland A's organization. They're relocating, I believe, to Las Vegas. Uh, there's, and it's a historic. You know, franchise. I mean, the Philadelphia A's used to be in existence until they moved out West Coast. Um, you know, you have Mark McGuire, all these other teams. You know, they won the World Series back in 1988. Anyway, historic franchise. And they're, they've they been completely inept over the last 20 years since the Billy Bean money ball days, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So we talked about that before. And Miguel, Miguel Cabrera comes for his <laughs> final final game to to the Oakland A stadium and pregame they gifted him with with what they thought was a beautiful gift which happened to be a $80 bottle of wine. Now Tom, <laughs> first of all, let's just talk about that. The $80 bottle of wine. This is a multimillionaire, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're kind of in the California, you know, is Napa Valley close to that? I mean, if it was like you couldn't go and get like, wow, this is an incredible, like, you know, you're a major league baseball organization, you know, like you can, uh, we can do a little bit better than a bottle of wine, an eighty dollar bottle of wine. Yeah, and the funny thing is, like, I'm seeing, I'm watching this like video, and it's he's at the at the home plate with the A's manager, and they're taking photos, photo opportunities, and so what wasn't revealed was the fact that. Miguel Cabrera has been to rehab for alcohol abuse in the past and has had an issue with alcohol throughout his entire career. It's like, what, what, what? 
did, did did he like did Detroit knock the A's out of the playoffs or something? Like, is this <laughs> yeah. like a shot that they? <laughs> if so, then that's I gotta give him credit for that. But come on, man, like Ugh. that's as bad as it gets. This guy that has a had a drinking problem, rehab, the whole deal. You're gonna give him alcohol as a gift? Hey, uh, here's some heroin for you too. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so not really their finest moment, but I guess it's a good thing that they're they're out of town. They're heading to to Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy, some some drama this weekend at the Ryder Cup. A uh, a lot going on, and just a, a little scuffle between the caddy for um, Cantley, Patrick Cantley, and Rory McIlroy. What was a, a match? Cantley makes a birdie. McElroy still has a shot. They, he was doing this like pretend waving of the hat to the, and I I don't get that. I don't know. Maybe you could tell me about that. But the uh, the hat waving thing became a thing. But he's in the line of Rory, and Rory kind of was like, "Yo, dude, get out of the way. I still have a putt here to to try and tie this." And what what like I don't, that? You're a caddy, get dude, get out yeah. of the way. It's funny because it's Tiger Tiger Woods' is old caddy. His name's uh, Joe Lacava. Um, and look, these, these Ryder Cups. Whose caddy become... was he before Tiger? Sorry to interrupt. He was someone else's caddy before Tiger, too. I think it was. he was... Freddie Couples' caddy? Might have been, yeah. I'll look yeah. it up, but you go ahead. Sorry. Now, uh, so these Ryder Cups have been chippy over, over the course of the last probably 20 years where it's become like really competitive. Uh, and there's just competition brings out you know, sometimes the best, sometimes the worst in people. And there's there was bad reporting all over the place with, with this year's Ryder Cup. Um, and it, there was a lot of speculation about why Patrick Cantley wasn't wearing the U.S. hat. And part of it was that he was doing it because he wanted to be paid to play in the Ryder Cup. None of these players get paid to play in the Ryder Cup. So as a sign of protest, he wasn't going to wear the, the United States hat, which was then – to be found untrue because the hat just didn't really fit him. And most of the players weren't wearing the hat because it just didn't fit their heads. Plus Patrick Cantlay was getting married right after the wild, the, the Ryder cup. So I'm sure he probably didn't want the tan lines that came with it well, you know, during the, uh, during the wedding ceremony and pictures and all that stuff. But you know, the, the, the speculative, well, the, the thing that happened on that green was that you know, Joe LaCava just was standing in Rory's line and he was chirping back and forth with the European team on the side. Uh, and there was just like a lot of back and forth. And Rory got pissed off and was like, dude, get out of my line. Like, what are you doing? Like, all right, you made the putt. Get off the green. Get out of my way. Um, and it just it became a situation that boiled over because like in golf, there are rules, right? There are there are things that you got to carry yourself in, in a certain manner on the course. And it just seemed a little out of character for Joe LaCava to be standing in his line, um, which is again, part of the rules of, of golf. You can't do those things. And it spilled over into the parking lot where like where he went after, uh, you know, the caddy and, and Shane Lowry had to hold him back. It was yeah. like a whole, it was a whole thing. Um, but you know, it, it was it was interesting. Look, the Europeans beat the shit out of the out of the United States team, um, and it's never close when we play on their soil. I, we get our aces handed to us all the time. And I also got to say this, Tom. I want to add that Ooh. the European fans are so creative with their chants. It's it's like I want to be more like I feel like the American the American crowds have to be a little bit more creative. Like I'm watching some of the highlights at Ryder Cups and they're they're coming up with stuff. They're singing songs like during during play. It was just like really creative like fandom and and I wish like we would be a little bit better. All we keep on doing is chanting like USA and uh, I believe we will win. I believe what we will win and that's fine. I just want to get a little bit more creative with it. Yeah. Huh? Let's get like three or four or five more. Now, Timmy, I would say that's probably something that stems from uh, the soccer leagues over there and their fandom and the the football Mm -hmm. fan, the European football fan, and them knowing their songs and different stuff like that. So, I mean, sounds to me like you want to be more like a a soccer fan. Um, Timmy. (laughs) And uh, 
Joe LaCava was Fred Couples' caddy as well, and then Tiger Woods. So, last thing, we y- y- you ended your weekend. The Eagles get the W in overtime. Oh. You're down in, where were you, your aunt's house? No, I was at my, so are we talking about the The jam, the oh. yeah. So, no, I, yeah, we watched, we got home finally from the wedding, was able to settle in and, and you know, watch the game, a little bit of the game. And <laughs> so the idea was just to kind of sit around, relax, recoup after a long weekend, watch some football. And then, yeah, I had to drive my girlfriend back to, to South Philly. So I've driven now this entire weekend for 10 hours, okay? Between you're driving down the Wildwood, back from Wildwood, all the way up to Jersey Shore, and all the way back, 10 hours in a car. And around 7 o'clock, I decide that I'm going to take my girlfriend home. She had work the next morning, so did I. So I, from South Philly to my house is roughly a 15-minute drive, right down 76, right by the stadium. So I get on to 76. It's about 7 o'clock, 7.15. And I drive about maybe two minutes and I see red lights everywhere. And I'm like, oh, this is not good. Like, but it's like right where like it bottles up, uh, like kind of bottlenecks a little bit. So I'm yeah. like, all right, it'll be quick. So I get on 76 and 20 minutes goes by and I've moved maybe 20 feet. And then like I'm looking down and I realize that I have no gas. And that there's no exit for at least another four, three miles. So I have no gas. My girlfriend's in the car next to me. I have to, I feel like I have to take a shit. Stinky. Um, yeah, I have to take a stinky. And I'm like, dude, this is not, this is not going to be good. Like, and I'm like tuning in the KYW to try to figure out like what's going on up there. And what comes over the radio was traffic and transit on the twos is that there is a accident and there's an accident investigation. And I'm like, oh. okay, <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's not that bad. And I'm like, like every once in a while I see like cars moving and I'm like, oh, okay. Like we're finally maybe, opened up. Yeah. Well, I'm finally like they probably shut it down and opened up a lane and dude, two hours and 20 minutes later, I finally am able to get off the exit two miles ahead. I sat in traffic for two hours and 20 minutes. I Now, mind you, I've driven 10, 10 hours and had not ran into a single piece of traffic oh, anywhere God. In, in two different states. And I have to drive a 20-minute drive from my house to my girlfriend's in South Philly, and it took me two hours and 20 minutes to get down to the stadium two hours and 20 minutes tom is there anything I, worse than traffic tim is there dude, anything worse i don't mind traffic as long as i'm moving right like like traffic is insane that type of traffic i don't think i've ever i've ever sat in a traffic jam that long in my life it was infuriating plus all the other stuff that was going on you got to go to the just, bathroom you're running out of gas you got the girlfriend in the car you're trying shoot. not to freak out Two day, two day wedding banger. Oh. Like, I, all I wanted to do was go to sleep. Like, I had to get up at two, two thirty the next morning for work. And dude, I'm, I'm like sweating talking about it right oh. now. So irritated. <laughs> oh man. And then like, there's people that are driving up the shoulder, right? oh. like thinking that they're gonna go somewhere. And all they're doing is creating more traffic. Yeah. Like, and, and so there's four lanes, almost five five lanes now because they turned the shoulder into a lane. There's five lanes of traffic trying to get off the same exit. So they they basically shut down the road. And I've come to find out that yeah, there was an there's a kid that was killed in an accident, which I feel terrible about because you never want to like freak out because something could really be wrong, right? Yeah. But like apparently there was a 15 year old kid that stole a car and then like ran into somebody and flipped the car. There was two act, two cars involved. And like a 15 year old kid was like, it was, it's such a shame, but it's like the worst timing of all time, dude. Like, like, <laughs> oh, come on. Like, just please. Yeah. Please. Like, let me off. The, like, I wish I could just leave the car and walk home. Like that's how <laughs> close to my house I was. Like, fuck <laughs> this dude. I'm out. Yeah. 
See ya. Ah, oh, man. Timmy, nothing worse than traffic. And God, like that's when the worst of me comes out is during traffic jams and or or poor driving by other people is when you see the worst of Tom Lavelle. And Timmy, we like to try to offer the fans out there, the people that listen to us, the best that we have. And we hope you like what we've been doing. Another great episode. Tim, is there anything you want to want to leave the, the Schmidt and Lavelleites with before we we sign off today? Um, Tom, yeah, I usually do the uh, the Captain James Hook thing. Yeah, uh, I'm not feeling that today, Tom. What? No, what you, you're not feeling anything, or no, you know, I just I want to wrap this show up and and just say thank you to to everyone. Thank you to you for participating in the gauntlet and losing. <laughs> Uh, um, and then I look forward to seeing you lose in another competition, which is a game of pickleball. I believe and I'm not uh, calling it, I'm not calling it a sport. It's a game. All right. Uh, so that that's it, Tom. That's that's what I'm going to leave the Schmidt and Vel- Lobelites with, and uh, and I think that's that's enough, Tom. Yep. And we will be keeping you posted on when that pickleball match will be happening. Um. For Tim Schmidt, my name is Tom Lavelle. What would the world be like without Captain James Hook? Am I right, Tim? That's right. That's right. It would be a different type of world. It would be a different type of world. New episodes every Thursday. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe. We love you. Have a great rest of your week. Go Phillies. Hopefully by the time you're hearing this, they have moved on to the next round of the MLB postseason. God bless you. God bless America. Ayanara. Hola.